Welcome to the show, everybody. Thanks for watching or listening. However it is that you're consuming this, thank you for doing that. If you are watching, you can tell already that I have chosen an especially scenic spot for my um, car cast, which by the way is what I'm calling it now. Uh, my car cast this morning, I'm in a parking garage right next to an overflowing trash can, which I'm not sure if you can see that in the shot or not, but it's, you know, I just, I, I thought I'd really like some beautiful scenery this time, I'm mixing it up a little bit. Now there's a protest taking shape for next Monday that I want to talk about. It's um called the sex ed sit out, sex ed sit out, say that five times fast. And parents across the country are being encouraged uh, by the organizers of this protest to keep their kids home for the day in order to make a statement about the degenerate, disgusting, perverse sex ed classes that are so common in schools nowadays. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I like the idea of the protest. My only problem with it is that I think it's a little bit too short. I think it should last a little longer. Like, for instance, um, it should last forever, maybe. I mean, yeah, keep, keep your kids home from public school, but don't send them back the next day. Never send them back, I think is what, that's, that's the protest that we really need to organize. But this is a good first step. It's a baby step, and that's good. And it's, it's very needed. It's warranted. It's about time that parents are taking a stand against this because sex ed has really devolved in our country into an abomination. And no age group is safe anymore. It used to be at least that the um, degenerates who come up with these with these sex ed uh, curricula, they, they would at least hold off until a kid was 13, 14, 15, but now they don't even do that anymore. So kids in the age, you know, it's second, third grade, sometimes younger, sometimes kindergarten, they're being indoctrinated, brainwashed into far left gender theory and everything else. And as the kids grow older, the sex ed becomes more and more pornographic, uh, more and more disturbing. Because what we're doing with kids, uh, what, what, what they're doing with kids in, in public school, it's not, they're not educating them with sex ed. This is about grooming. They're grooming them, much like a sex predator does with a child. They're grooming, conditioning the children. And so once they get into middle school and high school, then they're going to start, the schools start working with Planned Parenthood. No problem there, right? I mean, that's not like that's a controversial thing to do. Planned Parenthood, they only kill 330,000 babies a year. But yeah, bring them into the school. Why not? And so Planned Parenthood comes in, hands out condoms, and um, then the kids are taught about uh, sex toys and masturbation, anal sex, oral sex, bondage. I mean, these are all the things that the, kid, the, the schools are presenting to children. Now, when I talk about this, sometimes people will accuse me of being opposed to sex ed in general. They say, well, it sounds like you don't want any kind of sex ed. Oh, have you picked up on that? Yeah, that's actually exactly how I feel. You're exactly right. I want, there should be zero sex ed in the schools. Zero. Yes, a child should learn about the basics of human reproduction. A kid should know where babies come from when it's the right age to uh, broach that subject that should be broached, but you can cover human biology in biology class and you can cover anatomy when human anatomy comes up. Um, so that's, and that's what, those are the realms where this discussion should be had and it should never go beyond that. Just present the basic facts of reproduction. Leave it at that. That's what the schools should do. They should not take one step beyond the basic facts of human reproduction. Um, public schools ought to be a place of just pure academics. In terms of the things that they're learning, it should just be academic and nothing else. The stuff that they learn in sex ed now, this is not academic, it's doctrinal. Doctrinal as in these are doctrines that are being passed on to our kids. The schools have, it's not that the schools have an idea about the kind of knowledge that they want kids to have or the, the, the sort of information that they want kids to know. That, of course, is fine. No problem there. The problem is when schools get into their heads or, or get an idea of the kind of people 
they want kids to be and to become. And the sorts of belief systems and value systems that they want kids to hold. When they get into that, that's when we have problems. Um, that's when you, you, you go from, from science, like with sex and talking about reproduction, that's just a matter of, well, here's some information. Here's some, here's some information that you should know and just leave it at that. But when you go beyond that, then you've, you, you've left science and then you've, you've ventured into the realm of philosophy. And so these sex ed classes are really more like philosophy classes. Really strange, bizarre, gross philosophy classes because it's a strange, bizarre, gross philosophy, but that's what it is. Uh, so yes, it, it, it may be a teacher's job to tell a kid about anatomy or biology or whatever else. But it's not her job to give a sermon on her personal views about human sexuality or the proper context for it. She may hold the personal conviction that sex is an appropriate recreational activity for a 14-year-old. She's wrong about that. But the fact that she's wrong isn't even the point. The fact is it's a personal conviction. It's not a scientific fact. That's just how you feel. That's your value system. It has no place in the schools. It has no place in the classroom. Leave it at home. You can teach your own kids that, God help them. But you can't teach my kid that. See, the, the left uh, insists upon separation of church and state. But what we come to realize is that w- what they really mean is separation of the Christian church and state. But their own church their own doctrines, they very much want that in the schools because they do have their own. They have their church of self-worship, their church of, uh, which is really, as I've said before, leftism is really secular Satanism. So it's really just a secular kind of, a secularized church of Satan is what they ascribe to. Um, Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. That is the, that's the satanic motto. Just do what you want, you know, and that's also the motto of liberalism. Because it's Satanism. And again, they're, they're free to, to have that view. But that's a religious view. Doesn't belong in the schools. Gender fluidity is not science. It's a doctrine. Now, the fact that men have penises, women have vaginas. That's science. And yeah, we should tell our kids that. But... The idea that, well, a man could have a penis, but he feels like a woman. And so in some mysterious, incomprehensible way, he, even though physically he's a man, he still is in some way a woman because he feels that way. I mean, this is an intensely spiritual view. It's also intensely wrong and insane, but it's spiritual. It is not scientific. It's not physical. It's not academic in the slightest. Doesn't belong in the schools. Um, The idea that safe sex is better than abstinence, that's a doctrine. That's your personal view, not science. Doesn't belong in the schools. The idea that masturbation is healthy and natural, that's a doctrine, not science. Doesn't belong in the schools. These things are doctrines. Um, Now, to be clear, I'm actually, I'm not advocating for abstinence education here, so-called app. Much of the debate about sex ed is, well, should it be abstinence sex ed or should it be this kind of sex ed? Should it, it's it's basically hedonistic sex ed or abstinence sex ed. Now, if I had to choose between the two, definitely abstinence is better, but the answer is neither. The correct answer is neither. Um, Because yeah, I don't want the schools teaching my kid how to have sex or when to have sex. I also don't want the schools teaching my kid how to avoid sex. That, 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 that's not something that I want to entrust to the school system. That's not an appropriate conversation for a stranger to have with my child. Okay, for an adult who works in the school system, it's on, on either end of that spectrum. It's not an appropriate conversation for you to be having with my kid. And... You know, the issue with abstinence education is that abstinence education 
has to be grounded in something deeper than just uh, scare tactics and STD statistics. There's a reason why, you know, there, there are parents who in their homes, they try to teach abstinence um, and to tell their kids, oh, no, you know, you don't want to have sex at this age. And oftentimes that, that, that message just falls on deaf ears or the kids listen to it and it just dissipates very quickly. And I think oftentimes the, the reason is that it's, the message has to be grounded in something more than that. You can't really give that message in a totally secular way. So for me, when I'm, when I'm communicating this message to my kids when they're old enough to hear it, the message will be grounded in my views on marriage, on love, on loyalty, self-control, virtue, and faith. Now, I fully admit, now the left won't admit that their views on sex are, you know, religious in nature, but they are. I fully, I fully admit that my, my views on sex are informed by my religious convictions, and I make no apology for that. And that's why if I'm trying to explain to my kids why they shouldn't have sex before marriage, I mean, I, I, you know, I, yeah, I can tell them about STDs. I can tell them about different things. Like I can give them all the practical reasons, but the message will, it won't be as effective if I don't also mention, or if it's not in a deeper sense, grounded in the gospel, you know, where there are a lot of reasons not to have sex before marriage, but the real reason, the fundamental reason is that it's a sin. It's wrong. It's not what God wants you to do. And so if you're trying to tell your kids about sex and discourage them from having it, but you're not saying that, it's not going to work. You haven't given them enough of an incentive. You just haven't. So, but no, I, I, I'm not saying that the school should be telling that to kids. I, no, I don't want, leave that to me. I can do it. It's not for you. So it's very simple. How much sexual guidance and instruction should the government schools offer our kids? None. What percentage of a child's government education should be comprised of sexual enlightenment? Zero percent. How many times in a given day should the schools talk to the kids about sex toys or lubricant? Zero times. Zero point zero. Never. Never bring it up. It's not for you to do. So instead of arguing about what the schools should tell kids on the subject of sex, maybe we should consider the possibility that a government-controlled, mass-produced, and disseminated curriculum about sex and intimacy isn't necessarily the best way to handle such a profound and personal and important and intimate subject. It's not the way to do it. Uh, this isn't about hiding kids from sex. It's not about, you know, I'm not saying that we should censor, you know, when they're learning art, that we should put bars over the penis and the, and the breasts in a, in, a, in a work of art or anything like that. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that a, a, a lesson about sex that is rooted in someone's doctrine and personal convictions about the proper context for sex, you know, the, the proper moral view of sex, that message does not belong in the schools on either end of the spectrum. Just leave it alone. You know, it, it's interesting that if, um, if an adult came up to your child in any other context, like let's say at the playground or something, came up to your 13-year-old, well, your 13-year-old's probably not at the playground, uh, but whatever, if, if, if you're walking down the street and an adult, some strange adult comes up to your 13-year-old and says, hey, let's, uh, let, let's, uh, let's talk about, are you sexually active? Let's talk about sex toys. Or here, do you want a condom? Remember, practice safe sex. If adult did that in that context, what would you do? You'd probably punch him in the face and then call the police. And you'd be justified in doing so on both counts. But we've decided that it's okay for teachers to do. No, this subject belongs to parents. It is their domain. 
It is not domain of the schools. And I know I, you know, I often hear it argued that, uh, well, what if, par- what if parents aren't talking about it? What if the parents aren't doing their job? You know, what, what if the parents were, a lot of her parents refuse to talk to their kids about sex because it's an awkward conversation. Well, that's unfortunate. It's, it, it truly is unfortunate that so many parents in our culture refuse to do their job, but the school system is not a surrogate mother. The school system is not a foster home. It's not even a daycare center, or it shouldn't be. These people that you send your kids to school for, they are not stand-ins for parents. So there are certain things that if the parent isn't going to do, well, then those things just aren't getting done, I guess, sadly. I mean, I also happen to believe very strongly that it's a parent's job to instill a moral foundation in the child and to um, bring them up in the faith and in the gospel. I mean, I firmly believe that. That's a parent. So that should be a, a parent's primary job is to do that. But if the parent's not going to do it, school system can't step in. At least a government school system can. Sadly, in that case, that's a job that probably just isn't going to get done. There are certain jobs that either the parent does it or really nobody does it, or the kid just figures it out on his own, which is not ideal. But it's even less ideal to take this subject from the home and to place it in the hands of the state. Because that's what we've done. And one more thought about that very quickly. Um, because, right, if, if the parents won't do it, then what happens? Well, the kids just learn it from each other, right? They, they especially when it comes to sex, they're just going to pick it up from the internet and from each other and from peer culture. And um, they'll learn it that way. And so some people will argue that, well, you know, you can't have that. I mean, if it's like if the parents won't do it, then they learn it from the peers. I mean, then, yeah, you got to have the school step in because it's better for them to hear it from the schools than from their peers. But as I've already said, it's still not the school's job. But even aside from that, the the message about sex, the sex ed in the schools has become so vulgar and debased and just devoid of any kind of sense of maturity or responsibility that there's really no difference between what they would hear from their sex ed teacher in ninth grade and what they would hear from their ninth grade classmate. You might, they might as well just hear it from the, from the kids at that point. My, my point is, it's not like the schools have taken this subject and elevated it and done something more mature and responsible with it than what, uh, than what the classmates would already do. The school's message is basically, yeah, if you want to have sex, you know, go have sex. It's great. Just put on a condom first. Well, that's what the, the, that's what the, the kids. The kids don't need to hear that from the school. They'll just hear that from each other. So by this kind of, um, by removing any sense of morality or anything from the message of sex, they've also removed any justification for the sex ed programs even existing in the first place. So let's just get rid of them. Teach the kids the ABCs, one through threes, you know, have them read Shakespeare, do all that stuff. Science, okay, great. The moment you pull out the condoms, you know you veered way, way, way off track. But of course, I'm saying all this, I realize it doesn't matter. Um, The schools have become more and more doctrinal as time has gone on, and that's not going to change. So uh, it's great if you send your kids to public school, it's great that you're taking a stand. If you are taking a stand, I would definitely recommend it. But I think ultimately the only answer in the end is just to get our kids away from this system. Because it's just, it's not going to get any better, sadly. And I'll leave it there on a hopeful note. Have a great day, everyone. I'll talk to you tomorrow.